Hi there, I'm Sandy Alnock, artist and paper crafter here on YouTube, and today I'm going to use the plain and simple stamp set from Lawn Fawn to create a rainbow flight across a card. And it's similar to something I did with the shark on Instagram recently, but I'm going to do it with the plane instead. Cute set with lots of elements to it that you can use, but I'm going to use this one plane and make a whole row of them layered across the card and show you how I'm doing that. I'm setting it up in the Misty and I'm going to stamp in this light gray ink. And you can use any of your Copic friendly inks if you're going to use Copics. Use watercolor friendly inks if you're using watercolors and pencil kind of works with about anything. So I'm going to use this Eclipse Twins. There's two rolls in this package so I can put one of the rolls aside and save it for later and use the other one but these are great for small images because Lawn Fawn images are generally pretty tiny. It's sticky back and it's basically a masking tape with the stickiness of about a post-it note perhaps. And I will stamp it and then trim it out and then I can replace it right on top of that image to block it off so that when I do my other stamping and lay the other images down it's not going to stamp over top of that area. I'm using the packaging from the stamp set to lay down so I don't get any ink. If there's any residual ink on that, my stamp I don't get anything on the paper prior to being ready to do it. And I'm going to move it over while that that mask is still on that one plane so that I can make the one at the end. The reason that I'm making this one, that, that first one that I stamped, the central one, it's the only one that's going to have both the front and the back, the whole plane is going to be forward. So if you're going to use another image with this, just choose where you want your focal image to be. And that one's going to be mine. The rest of these will be sort of subservient to that main image. I'm going to spend more time and effort on coloring the main one than these other ones. But I'm just going to keep doing the same process of moving the mask down and placing my acetate over it so I can stamp the next image and just keep going down the line until I have all of them ready to go. And then it's just time to color. You can get out your colored pencils, your markers, your watercolors, and then just have fun with a rainbow of color. Now Roy G. Biv is the traditional um, rainbow colors. You don't have to go in Roy G. Biv order, but it helps sometimes to just figure out which one goes next to which one. So you kind of go from warms to warms to warms and then work your way into the cools, that sort of thing. But I've picked out a couple pencils and I'm just going to use one pencil per per each airplane except for my focal one. It may help, and I realized this later, to decide to color your focal one first and then that'll help you to decide what you're going to do with the rest of them. But instead, of course, I started with my magenta one here over on the right hand side and I'm pressing a little harder to get darker shades and lighter to get lighter shades because I really don't need a whole lot of depth of color on this. I'm not going for realism. I just want this really nice swoosh of color across the whole thing. And that's what I'm going to create for all of the other ones. But this main one, this focal one, the first one that I stamped, the rest of them are behind it. This is the only one that's fully in front. So you're going to see the propeller and the tail and everything. Whereas the others, you're only going to see parts of them as they peek out. And I'm going to use yellow and orange for this one. Because of course yellow is the best color. But I didn't want it all to be yellow. I wanted to have some color in it. So I'm just going to kind of trade off between the two. I'll do a little bit of shading on this one simply because it's the focal one. So I want to make sure that, that I put a little extra love and attention on it. I'm going to do the front and back of the plane in a secondary color. On the other ones it's just going to be a lighter version of the color on different parts of it so that I can differentiate those without having to put a whole lot of detail into the rest of them. One thing that lots of folks do ask about on my cards is how long they take. This one probably took me about 20 minutes to color and you know another maybe 10 minutes or so to get the stamping ready and get all my supplies and everything together so not too long and with something like this you can get into all kinds of crazy detailed coloring or you can just do it quickly like I am and this is of course 200 percent speed so it's a little faster than it would normally be but you know once you start getting the idea of how to color with pencil uh, you don't need to see it all in real time 
The pencil sharpener that I use, I talk about a lot, and many of you have purchased it because you heard that, heard me say it was cool and have written back to say, yes, it really is. It's called the Quiet Sharp Pencil Sharpener. It has auto stop, which means it's not gonna eat up your pencil. If you do have pencils that break all the time, because I get that question a lot too, pencils that break all the time have generally been dropped at some point. So if you have had your pencils for a long time, or even if you've had them for a short time, they may have dropped in the mail. If the whole, the whole bo box or batch or whatever you've purchased, if the whole thing is messed up, then I might, and, and you get it that way in the mail, I might write back to the company and just tell them, look, all the pencils are breaking, the leads are breaking, because they can break inside of that wood. Now I have, have heard some people try to melt the pencils so that the wax pencil inside melts down. And if you are desperate, if you have a lot of old pencils that are doing that, you may try it or look up online to see how people do it. I've, I've just heard the rumor that people have tried it. I have not because I don't have that trouble and I don't want to tell you anything that's incorrect that I haven't tried, but I'll let you go look that up online and see what you can find out about doing so because it's possible that that could be a solution that could work. It will only work with pencils that have lead in them. So like a, like a wax lead, if they have other kinds of leads, it may not melt. So the idea is to melt that, that broken portion of the wax. You may still have some weakness in those spots though. I, you know, that's why I'm not as 100% sure that it would work because it just seems to me that even melting the wax, unless you really, 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 really melt it, I can't fathom that it would be a permanent and stable solution. But you know, if your pencils are all breaking off, then I guess it's worth a try. So try it on one of your pencils that you don't use as much. Uh, one of the ones that still breaks and then see if it works and let me know. So now I'm gonna jump over to doing one of the elements that's gonna unify the whole thing, which is the black portion. So I'm gonna color all the wheels and then the, the structural lines that are on each of the planes and then the propellers in black. Now if you chose to do a different image, if you did something like the, uh, the shark that I showed on Instagram recently, the inspiration for this card, I did that in Copic markers and you know I did the, the eyes and the, the gills in black and then did the rainbow of the sharks across there. You can add, you know, sky, I'm going to do a little bit with the clouds, but you can add sky on something like this. You can add a swoosh of water if you're doing sharks. This technique would be really fun with any kind of a stamp that has motion to it because this rainbow kind of communicates motion as it makes this wave across the card. And it has lots of great color to it, which is really fun as well. And rainbow fun on a card always makes people happy, doesn't it? I always think of my friend Laura Basson when I think of anything rainbow. So hopefully she'll see this. And if you do, then hi, Laura. I don't know if she watches my videos or not. The clouds that I stamped, I turned the stamp different directions so that they wouldn't all look like they were identical. There's only one little cloud group, but there's also hearts. You could do the little, little heart puffies instead of cloud puffies. I'm gonna put a darker tealish color right around each one of the clouds because I wanted to make them pop out a little bit and create just a little tiny bit of sky around them. And then I'm gonna go in with a lighter pencil too. Now, when you're trying to blend color pencil into white, it can be challenging. You, you know, the lighter color you use, the easier it's gonna to be to blend them. So here I'm using a really light blue, this 919. And I'm also going to lighten it even further because I'm just kind of sketching the color in there just so I get something so the clouds look white. And then I'm taking a kneaded eraser and just kind of wiping and dabbing across the surface of it. And you can see it's lightening everything quite nicely. You can either press it and lift up with the kneaded eraser or you can rub it a little bit, but just be gentle because you don't want to mess up the wheels or stretch any of that black from the, the wheels and that sort of thing. I don't want to make any messes. Now there's also this little flag that the plane carries and I'm coloring the flag with the word thanks in it. There's a couple different options for what can be in the banner and I decided for thanks for this card and you can stamp any of those in there and I trimmed it out and now I'm just going to add on there the little lines 
and I can make them any shape, any size that I want because I've trimmed it out. I don't have to go with what was on the stamp. And I use those power tabs to adhere it on there. I put the power tab under the left side, like right under the T, and then some regular adhesive under the S portion so it looks like it's flapping up from the card up into the air. And I trimmed down the panel, added a couple layers of scrap solid cardstock that matched some of the colors, and that was it. Hope you enjoyed this. If you did, please click that like button. You can click on my face to subscribe to my channel, click on a couple other videos to watch some more here. And I hope to see you another time. I put out videos three times a week and would love to visit with you again sometime. Thanks so much. Have a really great day. Bye-bye.